and I'm going to need an antibiotic bag with the primary tubing, long tubing, because it's a saline lock. I can't use short tubing, and I have my IV pole. Now, I'm going to pretend that this is not a pump, it's just an IV, because I don't need the pump. I'm going to turn it around because it's confusing. All right, so you know what I'm getting? All right, so I go to my table, I find my alcohol wipe. I found, I'm going to take two of these so I can go search into the bag. You don't have to do that either. And it's all pretend. You're not going to flush anything. Here's my, I'll have two. My alcohol wipe. I don't need this. I don't need this for number one. Nope, I don't need it. And I need my bag. And this is a 50cc bag. Okay? Now, if you take 50 or 100, it's okay. You don't have to pick which one is right. We don't, okay? And then you come to the bedside and we'll tell you what's in it. We'll tell you, oh, that's gentamicin. 100 milligrams of gentamicin is in here. Oh, there's something not on the table. And then the, the label. The label for the bag. You know, the med label. Mm -hmm. We'll tell you to bring one of those, too. Let's find one. Let's see. Is it, no, there's a roll of them in here, but you see this is all flowing here. You know, it's on a... Um, <laughs> No, that's tape. All right, well, we're going to have med labels on here, okay? We're going to have a med label. It's a roll. Yeah, put it down the bottom. That's it. That's it. Okay, so we're going to have med labels there, too. And so you're going to come with the uh, med label, okay? And then we're going to say, we'll say to you, okay, so how would you fill this out? So patient name, room number, gentamicin, gentamicin. 50 milligrams, start time, whatever it is, by your initials. Flow rate, we didn't get to. The last thing we ask you to do is calculate the, the drip factor. We'll have calculators here. We'll have calculators for you, and we'll tell you how long we want this to run. And I'm going to do that last. I'm going to show you the quick way to do this. Some people like to do dimensional analysis, the math, the dimensional analysis. You could do that. I don't do it that way. I do it a fast way. And when you have 10 patients, you want to do it the quick way also. So then I'll say, okay, I want this to run over, and I'll tell you a half hour or an hour. But that's the last thing you do. We don't do that to the last. All right, so then I filled in my flow rate. I can't. I don't know what the flow rate is. Prepare by me and the date, and I'm going to put it on the back of the bag, not where the writing is. Don't put it on this side. Put it on this side. There's nothing here. But we don't actually put it on. So now I want to get this out of my hands. I'm going to put it up here. Okay? Remember, I'm not IDing the patient. I am. You are. Mm -hmm. And I'm not uh, getting the patient ready, and I'm not explaining. You're going to do all that when you come to the patient's bedside. I'm just showing you the skill. So I'm going to find out about the allergies. Uh, I'm going to check the site. Okay? You're going to do all of that. You don't do anything until that. Okay? So now I'm going to put this here. I'm going to put on a pair of, um, and you're not even going to put those on, non-sterile gloves. Clean gloves. I'm going to come over. Okay, and I already assessed the site, I, I did the patient, I did all of that. And now what I'm going to do is this has to be clamped. This has to be clamped. Okay, and I'm going to come with my gloves on, and I'm going to wipe off the site, right? Here's my saline, my flush. It's already here. I'm going to connect my flush. I'm going to open the clamp. I'm going to flush it. Can you see whoever's behind me? Flush it, and then I'm going to close it. Okay? So I opened it to flush it, I closed it, and now I'm going to take it off, and I can because I closed it. Okay, now I'm going to come over and I'm going to take my antibiotic, and I'm going to clean it again, and I'm going to connect it. Okay? So we only needed the alcohol, the, I would have had the two flushes, the alcohol, this, that's it. Yeah, we did that already, you're not doing that. You're, no, no. You came in late. <laughs> We're going to have all the equipment at the bedside because we don't have time for priming and I don't want floods in here. Please don't try to open them up. We're not doing that. We're not opening these things up. Okay? Because some students decide they're going to do that too. Okay. So now the last thing we're going to say is, now you're ready to go. How long do I want this to run? This is a 50cc bag. The formula is cc's in the bag times the drip factor divided by the number of minutes you want it to run. CC's in the bag times the drip factor divided by the number of minutes. The drip factor is 15. This tubing is 15. So you have to be careful. We're going to tell you 15. When you go to the hospital, you always have to look. Now, it's not 25. This one's 60 because that's for a pump. Okay? If it's not for a pump, let's see if this says, no, that's a pump. I'm looking for, okay. So if you were to find the bag, 
that was not for a pump, it would say 15. Some hospitals are 10. So it's cc's times drip factor divided by the number of minutes. And we'll tell you 30 or 60. So I want this to run over, what did I say, 50 cc big? So 50 times 15 divided by 30 or 60, whichever I tell you. That's going to give you drops per minute. So then you'd say, oh, my answer is 25. Okay, you don't open it. You watch this drip for, and this would be open, but this is closed. That's okay, it's closed. You would watch this for a full minute. Mm -hmm. None of that 15 jazz, that 15 second jazz times four. No, no. And we don't do that for heart rates either. I scream when I hear that. One minute you watch. Okay, 25 drops. Okay, so now we say at the same time, oh, beautiful, your IV went in. You were right. You said it, but you're not opening it up, so you're pretending. Close it. Now I come back in, right? And now what am I going to do? I'm going, I have my, I didn't open it. Look, it didn't run. That wouldn't have run. It was closed. So I realized I didn't open it, but I caught it. That wouldn't have run. I didn't open it. So I had to open it. Okay, now I'm going to close it. The IV's done. I'm going to close it. I'm going to put on, wash my hands, do everything you're supposed to do in my cheat. And I'm going to now disconnect it. So I'm going to have my uh, saline flush ready, right? I closed it. I disconnect it. Okay. And there's a cover, I hope. I'll put it here. I don't know what they have at the hospital. How do you cover it? Clean it. Attach it. Open it. Flush it. Close it. Remove it. That was my second flush because my IV was done. Now you're not going to need the flush for number two, three, and four. You only need it for skill one. So this was which one? This saline lock number one. Because that one was IV piggyback. So IV piggyback. We always call, we call them IV piggybacks. Yeah, it's a little bit confusing. Yeah, right. we call it's them all IV piggybacks, but it's really IV okay. medication. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this patient only had a saline lock, but for two, three, and four, you're not going to need the flush because there's something else going. Okay? So you only need the flush for number one. All right. So now everyone understand that one? Now remember, you're going to have to do all the other stuff that's on that, on the, in the learning packet. Mm -hmm. All right. Now I'm going to walk in to number two. So let's say you didn't pick one. You picked number two. So now we have a different scenario for number two. Now I walk in to get this pump. Ignore the pump. Ignore it. I walk in and I find a patient not hooked up to a pump has an IV running. So this patient, you walk in, and there's an IV running. So this has to be open, right? Yeah, it has to be open. So this patient, no pump, has um, D5W running, whatever it's on, 75 an hour, I don't care what it is. So now I have a different scenario altogether. Now I want to do an IV piggyback for a patient who already has an IV. Okay? So now what do I need? Hmm. Okay, I need the hook. I need, uh, I need secondary tubing. I don't need primary tubing. I need the short secondary tubing. I don't need the long tubing. Now, if you pick the wrong, the long tubing, <coughs> could you use it? Yeah, you can, but it's too cumbersome because you're going to see where I'm going to put this. So I want to get this out of my hands. I'm going to put it up here and I'm going to label it, okay? And we'll tell you what's in it. You know, faculty make up different things, okay? Now, we're using 50 and 100, but you know there's some antibiotics you can put in 250, okay? But we're not doing that. So we're using 50 and 100. So I put my label on. Okay, now I have to figure out what I'm doing. I already checked it. I already assessed the site. I ID'd the patient. I just told the patient what I was doing, etc. So where am I going to put this now? Well, again, this is pump tubing. So we're going to have the other tube. We're going to have a regular IV that looks like this that's not going to be on a pump, but it's still going to go in the same place. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lower this one. Okay? Because this is the one that's running. And I'm going to clean this off. I have my non-sterile gloves on still. Students say, well, you're not dealing with... I said, no, you have to wear... Uh, clean gloves because I have to go assess the site and everything. I have to have gloves on. I'm going to clean this off and I'm going to put it here. Now you see how it reaches this one? Yeah, why would I use all that long tubing if this is where I'm going? See? All right. Now how do you control it is the key. So you see this clamp here and this clamp here? 
which one has to be open and closed? This one has to be completely open. This one has to be completely open. The one on the secondary line to the antibiotic, wide open. Now, you're not going to open it. You're going to control it from the one closer to the patient. So this one is wide open, and you're controlling it with the one that's closer to the IV. That's how we regulate it. Okay? Because then what happens when this is done, this will stop, this one will start. This one will start automatically on its own when this is empty. And then you have to come and switch it. Okay? So you have any, that one's going to be a little tricky. So you open the one that's the antibiotic completely, wide open, and you regulate it from the one that's closer to the patient. And then we'll tell you again how long. Okay, this is a 100 cc bag. 100 cc's times 15 divided by the number of minutes, 30 or 60, depending what we tell you. Skill one, two, four, all have the rate of 15, the, the flow rate, the, uh, the, uh, the drip factor of 15. The only one that has 60 is number three, the one where you have to go through the pump. Okay, it's only the pump one that's 60. The other three are 15. Okay, so you would have to know that because when you go over to the table, you're going to say, oh, okay, 100 times 15, and McGrath said an hour, 60. And then you're going to tell me drops per minute. Okay? Now, do you get that one? Okay, so now I walk in, it's done. So now what I'm going to do is this was wide open. Close it. Okay, close it. And I'm going to take it down. And I'm going to take it out. Now, how long is an antibiotic with the tubing? Good for. How long is this good for? If I'm, no, the antibiotic, no, no, 24 hours. So if I'm going to give this same antibiotic again, let's say it's 6 a.m., and I'm going to give this same antibiotic again at noon, I'm going to leave this here. This is empty. Whoops. This is empty. What I'm going to do is put my new bag on this, on this one because I could use this tubing again for 24 hours as long as it's the same antibiotic. I can't mix antibiotics. Let's say this was gentamicin and I got to give ampicillin. You can't mix them. So I can only use this tubing again if it's the same antibiotic. You get it? So I can use this tubing for 24 hours. This tubing that was on the primary line, that's 96. This one. So now I'm going to come in, I'm going to put this back up, and what am I going to do? I have to re-regulate this because I, I fooled around with it. So I have to go back to this, and you don't have to do that. Oh, Professor, I'm now going to go and put this back to how many drops that it was before. Because you have to make sure now that it's right. It's probably not right. Okay, so that one goes back up, and you don't have to touch the clamp. There's nothing with, the only thing that we cleaned was this. We don't need a saline flush. Why would we need a saline flush? The patient already had an IV going. We don't need a flush. It's flushing already. We don't need a flush. Okay? Do you get that one? So you're going to pick one or two. You're going to definitely get that. So now we're going to do three, and three is where you walk in and you find your patient hooked up to a pump. And we're not going to ask you to set the pump. Um, I like the other one better because I knew what to do. Power, rate, volume to be infused, and start. Probably is the same thing with this one. They're all the same usually. Power is on because it's going to be on. Rate, you put the rate in. And then you put the volume to be infused. That's the amount in the bag I'll show you. And then you press start. And then when it's done, this takes over. It goes back to where it was. You see, that's the beauty. So now this one is really hooked into this pump. So this one has, this is the right tubing. Tubing for a pump is a special tubing. So this is already on. And the rate, the, uh, the uh, drip factor is 60. Once you get this tubing, it's 60. So now you have to remember, oh, see, this was an old one, C10, but that's old, C10. It used to be 15. It's 15 now. So see, that's an example of, but well, we're going to tell you 15. This is the old one, 10. And this is the uh, pump is 60. All right? OK, so it's going to be either 15 or 60. But with this one, this is the only one you need 60. So now <laughs> I walk in, and I find I find this patient hooked up to a pump. I have to give an antibiotic through the pump, because number four is bypassing the pump. Okay, number three is through the pump. What does it mean when you give an IV through the pump? That means that the IV that's there is not going for that period of time. This is stopping. The antibiotic is going. Now, if you have a patient 
who has to have what's in here all the time, 24-7, you have to do skill number four. Let's say that's an aminophilin drip. Patient needs this to breathe. You're not going to stop this every time you have to give an antibiotic. So you're going to do number four. You're going to bypass it, or you're going to get another line. We're not telling you that. You know, sometimes patients have two IVs. That helps us, doesn't it? One can be for the pump with their aminophilin, and the other one can be for antibiotics. But we're saying that the patient doesn't have another access for the competency. We want you to know the difference. So for number three, I walk in, I find this is on. Okay, this is going. There's 100 cc's an hour, whatever it may be. Uh, D5 is what it is. Looks like there's about 600 in the bag, and I have to give an antibiotic. Okay, so I need, we're going to use this anyway. Let me tell you, for number three and number four, the IV would work without this, the antibiotic. We want you to take this to get into the practice of always keeping your IV, your, your antibiotic higher. So for three and four, take it for the competency, but your IV would run without it. That I'll tell you. But we want you to get into the practice of using these. Okay? That's right. Even for number four, it would run. Because we, we know it's two separate systems. Three and four, you don't need this, but we want you to take it. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to take alcohol. I'm going to take my label. I don't need a saline flush because my pump is going, and I need secondary tubing. Secondary tubing. Because I have to go through the pump, which is here, high up. All right, so I'm going to put my bag up. It's labeled. I'm going to lower main, my main line, even though it doesn't make a difference, I'm going to lower it. Okay, so I lowered, the pump is still going, the pump is still going, right? I haven't done anything. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to alcohol wipe this one, because this is going through, see how it's going through the pump? See? I'm going to clean it off, and I'm going to connect it. So you, for number three, always connect your IV to the higher port. See? You see where it is? Can you see that? It's in the high port. Okay, now I have to go and I have to touch the machine because the machine is going for this one. It's not going for this one. So now we have to use the 60. So I have to say 100 cc's in the bag times 60 divided by the number of minutes. Okay, now this one, a lot of students say, well, I don't have to really do it. I can do it in my head. I said, okay, because 100 times 60 divided by 60, the 60s cancel out, it comes to 100. You see? Yeah. If you want it to run in a half hour, you have to double the rate. Do you get that? So let me tell you again. 100 cc's in the bag times 60, because that's the drip factor, divided by 60 equals 100. Cc's per hour and drops per minute on the pump are the same. Okay? If I wanted to run over a half hour, 100, times 60, right, divided by 30, 200. It makes sense. You want it to run faster, you're going to increase the rate. Then we'll come over and we'll say, okay, and again, I'm not familiar, familiar with this one, but we want to get the button that says, oh, it says piggyback. The other one said secondary. The old pump's in secondary. This one says piggyback. Press piggyback, press rate, put the rate in, 100. Volume to be infused, 100. That's how much in the bag, okay? And then you press start. And where is start on this? I don't know if it's enter. Run. Run. Thank you. Run. Run is start. Okay, so run is the start button, which, okay, but it does say rate. Piggyback is the old secondary. See, the other one that I do when you hear me on this one on the little, I'm saying secondary because that's what the old pump said. This one says piggyback. Okay, and instead of start, it says run. Okay? You have to make sure that this is open. You're not going to open it, but you have to open it because what's going to happen? Beep, beep. It's going to alarm. So this has to be open all the way. And then once you set it, it's going to go. <clears throat> so do you get that one? So this is the only one that you need the rate of 60. All right? Then what's supposed to happen, it's done. I come back in. Oh, I can just disconnect it. I'm going to come back in. I'm just going to, I'm going to disconnect it. It's done. I'm going to put my piggy bit, my IV bag back up, and I just want to make sure that this pump went back to what it was before. So whatever the rate was before, I have to make sure that it went back to that rate. So let's say it was 50 cc's on here. I have to make sure that it says 50 and not the 100 that I put in. Now remember, each time you do this too, you're coming in, you're checking the patient, check your checklist on your thing. I'm not looking at that even. Make sure you check the site. Everything you have to know is in that learning packet. So when you practice, 
go from the beginning. I come in, wash my hands. Meaning we want this pump to go wherever it's going at. We want to leave it alone. We don't want to touch it. Why? They need the fluid or they need the med that's in there. We can't touch it. We want to give them an antibiotic. We don't have another line. So now what do I need? I need primary tubing. I'm not going through the pump. I'm not going here anymore. I'm going, I'm going here. See, you see where it is? You either, when you have a pump, you can either go here, which is number three, secondary tubing, here, number four, primary tubing. Secondary tubing is not gonna reach there. You cannot use primary, secondary tubing. So now I'm gonna bypass the pump. I need my little, my little thing though, my little blue thing. Here it is. Okay, I need this blue thing. I need my alcohol. So now, again, I'm gonna put this up for number four. It still would run, still would run, okay? Get this here. I'm gonna lower this any, you know, remember I said it's gonna run, but let's put it down anyway. To tell you the truth, I think it's also very good visually for the eye because if I'm walking in the hall and I see a patient and it's not my patient and I wanna know if they have an antibiotic, I can see this kind of quickly. I can see this blue thing. So this, number four, has not stopped. This is running, whatever it was, it's running. I'm gonna come in now and I'm gonna bypass the pump. So I'm gonna take my alcohol. This is open, it has to be open because this is running. Clean it with alcohol, connect it, and now I'm gonna regulate it from here. There's only one place you can regulate it from here. Okay, so this one is still going. It has not stopped. It's still on a pump, whatever it is, you don't touch it. Now I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna figure out the rate again, and it's the same thing. 15, so you have to say 50 times 15 divided by 30 or 60. Now, you may have an instructor who says they want it in 45 minutes. I can't guarantee what they're gonna say. I usually, for me, I say 30 to 60, because that's normally what it is. Very rarely do we have a 45, not often. We're not gonna ask you why would it be 30, why would it be 60. Depends on the drug. Some people, they're very, you know, they get very, um, oh, it hurts, it's painful, and then we make it 60 instead of 30 minutes. You see? Because we have that leeway, all right? And that's it. So now the two of them are running at the same time. These two are running at the same time. Come back, it's done. Close it, close it, disconnect it, do everything I have to do, reassess the site, etc. and then I'm gonna put this back up for next time. So sometimes you'll walk, I put this back up. So sometimes you're gonna walk in and you're gonna find a patient with an IV pole that has a few of these because they have three antibiotics. So each one has to have their own bag. So you'll see three. And the bag is supposed to be labeled and we don't have the tubing, the, the, the label for the tubing, but every tubing has to be labeled so you know when to change it. So I'll know in 24 hours from the time I put this up that I have to change it. So what's today? Today is Friday. The Friday, what, I, Saturday at 12 o'clock, I have to take this down, okay? The other one is good for 96 hours. So, all right? So do you get it? Yes. I think the more you practice, you know, just do it. I would recommend that you practice today and I think tomorrow you have, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, this box is for students because we have our competency box elsewhere. In here, you're gonna find IV bags with short